Um, listen, I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to you this morning. And since we only have an hour, and I've been known to run on and on and on, um, I'm not going to get into too much of my biography or, or my life story. And instead, what I'd like to do is talk about you. <coughs> Specifically, what I know about you. Uh, and don't worry, I didn't uh, Google any of your dark secrets. But um, some might consider the things that I know about you fairly intimate. Like, for example, I know that everybody in this room, their heart will beat 100,000 times today. I know that when you add that up to a year, it'll equal about 40 million beats per year. If you live like the average Manitoban, which apparently is 74.1 years, your heart will beat about 3 billion times over the course of that lifetime. Now, beats to pump 2 gallons of blood per minute, 120 gallons per hour, and over the course of vascular channels that, when added up, equal to about 60,000 miles in length. To put that in perspective, that's twice the circumference of the Earth. I know that every 20 to 60 seconds, every red blood, every red blood cell you have will course through the entire body, and over the course of its 120-day lifespan, it will do so 75,000 to 250,000 times. By the way, if you stacked up every single one of your red blood cells, it would reach 31,000 miles into the sky. In the second that it takes you to inhale, you will have lost 3 million red blood cells. In the second that it takes you to exhale, you will have replaced them. In fact, you will replace 10 million cells in your body per second. I also know that every single second, every single cell in your body will have undergone 100,000 chemical reactions. Now, when you multiply that by 70 to 100 trillion cells, which is what they estimate makes up the human body, we don't have a calculator that would possibly reach that number. I know that every single day your pancreas will regenerate itself, Every single day, your liver will perform 66 different functions. I also know how smart you are, in the sense you've got these tiny proteins in your body that is able to read the most sophisticated DNA sequences that no technology that we have today could possibly come close to. That's quite a feat when you consider that if you were to unravel all the DNA in your cells, and put them length to length, they would travel to the sun and back 150 times. These same tiny proteins will check up to 3.2 billion nucleic acid sequences per day looking for mutations. The other part of your homeland security, your immune system, will can, has the capability of fighting off hundreds of thousands of bacteria and viruses without even letting you know you're under attack. And on top of that, memorize those invaders, so that if it ever encounters it the next time you come across it, you'll know exactly how to contain and eliminate. One sperm, one egg. Get together, and you end up with 70 to 100 trillion specialized cells. Now, how does that happen? It's pretty amazing when you think about it. So really, how well do we know ourselves? How many people, after hearing all that, in here would argue that health is not our greatest asset. How many people would say that their house, their bank accounts, their RSPs, their brand new 2011 Mercedes-Benz is more valuable than your health or the health of your loved ones? Good, we're all in agreement. Life isn't as much fun without your health, isn't it? And anybody who's had a health challenge in their lifetime or has a loved one or a relative that went through the same thing, you can understand what I'm saying. Now, the second question is, does anyone here believe that they are the healthiest they can be? That they're at their max in terms of health and wellness? Nobody? Okay, good. I'd have to challenge you if you were. <laughs> and you'd actually have to come up and finish my lecture. <laughs> um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, so the question, if we openly admit that health is our greatest asset and that life isn't as much fun without it, 
and that none of us in here are quite there yet. The question is why? Now, I ask people the question in a way that, not to make people feel guilty about what they have and what they haven't done up to this point, but really it's been a question that I've been asking myself for the last 18 years. And what I'm going to do is provide you today, share with you some of the answers I got through my research, through my clinical experience, and even through some personal life experience. So I want to let you know that I'm realistic about my expectations for you today. We have less than an hour because I'm supposed to leave some time for questions. Good luck. Um, but uh, uh, I understand that nobody's lives are going to be drastically changed after listening to me for an hour. My only goal is to say that one thing that makes you think about you and your life in a way that perhaps you haven't thought about before. See, I consciously decided with my life that my purpose would be to make anyone who is willing the hero of their life story. And in a way that's on their terms, and in a way that gives them more greater fulfillment and more self-empowerment. So in order for me, and that means different things for different people. Now, in order for me to do that for you today, I'm going to need an agreement from you. Can we all agree in this room that creating wellness is, is in a way, a form of stewardship? Yeah? Okay, I see some heads down. Good. You can interact with me. That's good. Uh, good. Because I, I want you to understand that creating wellness is a form of student stewardship. It's not about random chance or dumb luck. And I'm here to tell you that creating wellness in your own lives is less about what you do and how you do it, and more about why you do it. I have two whys in my life. This is my wife and my daughter. And I just decided that, you know what? I'm committed to being the very best father and husband that I can be for them. My second why is, and you may not see it, this is a picture of all the children that we have in our office as patients. Um, so I'm also committed to, you know what? They're, they're our future generation. They also deserve the very best meeting that they possibly can get. So does anyone here also have loved ones or even clients that deserve your very, very best? A lesson for me was when you get beyond creating wellness more than just for the selfish reasons like, say, looking good at your high school reunion or looking good at the beach, you start to value it more for what it brings you for your life. For example, um, wouldn't it be cool if you had the strength, the energy, and the mental stamina to play with your child after a long day's hard work. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it also be cool that if you, when you retired, you could travel without having any physical limitations whatsoever? <clears throat> See, the selfish reasons are fine. It's nice to have six pack abs and toned facial muscles and big biceps. But health for the bigger picture goes beyond that. Wouldn't you agree? Good. So step one is finding your reason why. And I've always said, if you have a big enough why, the what's in the house gets smaller. So let's define wellness. Wellness is the consistent engagement of lifestyle, habits, or behaviors that moves us towards health and homeostasis. One thing I, I hope you can that I can hope to get across to you is that health really exists on a continuum where you have 10 out of 10 uh, highest health, optimal health as you can possibly get, you're living life fully, and over on the other end you've got zero, which means you're probably dead, but <laughs> what everybody in this room is somewhere in between that, yes? And I've always told all my patients, it really doesn't matter to me where you are on that scale from zero to 10 whether you're a three or a five or a seven. It only matters to me which direction you're going into. 